going to for strikes as well. How then do we solve this perennial issue that we've been having of collective beginning agreement? If it's not corporate, yeah, we, we have also Wasu as well really coming up with the same, same, same scenario at the end of the day. What is the problem? Well, I think first of all, we need to benchmark with uh, other countries in the world in terms of the pay of a teacher. What is the pay of a teacher, particularly in schools that are known to have good education systems? And we should be able now to use that proportionally towards Kenya. And we set this as uh, a competitive pay for teachers. But the fact of how do you raise that money fundamentally, I think we have to look at our national budget and ask ourselves, are there some areas that are not critical to the country that we can cut back on and put particularly into teachers and doctors because these are the two professions that are involved with the human capital of the country. If you have good edu education and good health, then the outcomes of that labor force will be quite high. So I think it comes down to a cutting back on sectors maybe that are not secondary to, are not primary to the government's agenda uh, and being able to use that budget to now give our teachers a competitive pay so that they can focus on their kids from morning to evening. You have far too many teachers, far too many uh, lecturers who are trying to multitask, have side jobs so that they can make that cost of living and the cost of education uh, starts coming down. So I think we need to give health and education that priority, but it can only start by benchmarking with the rest of the world and ask ourselves what is a comfortable teacher's pay. Fantastic. All right, Professor uh, Iraq as well, your closing remarks uh, and on a raft of issues and what I've asked Ken as well briefly. Two, 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 two main comments about uh, the brain drain. Maybe I forgot that. Mm -hmm. If you look at Silicon Valley, where a lot of innovations come from, there are a lot of people who go there as immigrants. If you look at the report that came yesterday and the before yesterday about Kenya's wealthiest people, yes. they're surprising they're immigrants. So at the end of the day, the brain drain also benefits the world in general. It might not benefit a particular country, but it benefits the world in general because when people move from their comfort zone, they tend to be more entrepreneurial and more innovative. On uh, strikes by teachers and doctors and Uwaso and uh, Nat and uh, KN and KN and TU and so on, are you surprised that the sectors where a lot of strikes take place are the ones where productivity is hardest to measure? How do you measure the productivity of a teacher, of a doctor, and so on? So the best way to, to give people salary raises is to tie productivity to salary raise. But if you're more productive, if you're a teacher and you're getting more A's, you're able to have students pass, get jobs, and so on, we give you salary raise. Because currently, as things start now, if there's salary raise, and a teacher got a mean of 1.0, another teacher got a mean of 10.0, they all get salary raise. So there are no incentives for people to work hard, for people to be innovative, for people to go beyond the core of duty. Mm -hmm. So if you tie salary raise to productivity, then I don't think strikes are going, strike, strikes should add. Why should we pay people more salary just because they have gone on strike? And I'm saying that because I'm a member of WASU, but I'll still say that, that we should tie productivity to pay rises. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, Honorable Munyasi Sakwa on that bit as well, yeah, and also your closing remarks. Thank you. On the issue of strikes and so on, um, I have um, one unorthodox suggestion. Uh, one of the things that we should do is remove the management of uh, the benefit structures, for example, retirement funds uh, from employers to uh, standalone institutions, uh, pu public or private, depending on how they establish their credibility, so that even as a teacher, by moving, you're not going to affect your, your, your pension funds and so on. Uh, those are being managed by somebody else. To allow free movement to where people feel comfortable, for whatever reason it is, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are moving. Uh, and bad employers will then not have the people that, that they need. People should not feel tied down so that you have to try and break out of it. And, and, and least of all, employers must not frustrate uh, the free association of workers. Uh, as is happening now in TSC and I think in other, a few other areas like that. Uh, so I think doing that, when you remove that benefit management, people are free to look around. You can be a, a teacher in a public school, you can go to a private school, you can be in a private school, you can go to a public school, and the benefits you have are managed by uh, outside institutions. It's, it will work the same way with uh, uh, general employment facilities, particularly in the public sector, when that happens. People can move around. Uh, depending on where there is a, a relatively uh, better opportunity. But uh, uh, overall, I think that um, 
uh, the benchmark is suggestion is a good one. I lived in, a, in Ivory Coast uh, many years ago, and I found out when I got there that uh, uh, high school teachers were remunerated. New, a new high school teacher who graduated and joined uh, high school earned about the same thing, the same pay uh, as a doctor, and higher pay than a doctor. And the reason was that they were trying to replace that category are mostly French teachers. They were trying to replace that. So teachers as a whole gained tremendous, tremendous currency uh, and were in demand. So students, the bright students, chose teaching as one of the options they could do. That's many years ago. I don't know how they have adjusted it now because I'm sure they finished the substitution. So uh, prioritizing it in public policy and stabilizing that policy can be one way in which uh, we can be able to attract the best people who want the job. Mm -hmm. uh, I know students who apply to go into, uh, let's say, engineering or, or something, and then you are given uh, a bachelor's in education or something, and they never wanted it. They obviously are not going to become good teachers. They get there, they don't even pick up jobs sometimes, they begin looking for jobs outside the sector. We must stop that. There is a, a kind of uh, cartel that just seems to disrupt choices of students. I, I see it as a, a politician. I get a lot of complaints, requests for change and so on. I applied for this, but I've been given something that I never mentioned and so on. I think we must get out of that mode. Because that students don't have to go in if they don't get what they wanted. They can wait another year and then go in later and so on. So there are many things to do. But lastly, as I wind up, I think that uh, we are in a year of turmoil. Uh, uh, the, I think we're, we're a year in which well, the, our political choices at the national level that we make are going to affect whether we are going to move towards a consensus building uh, so that by the time we, we go to election as a nation, we are working towards the same goal, different political formations, the same goal or not. I don't think that public leaders, national leaders, should associate themselves with factions at the national level uh, to say this is the better one than the other. Let the people choose. And it will be a lot easier for us to manage the election process or the post-election process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Bunyasi Sako, a member of Parliament in Mbale, also a consummate uh, economist. Thank you for coming through this morning on Morning Prime, so Kony Prime, uh, as we mentioned it, looking at matters uh, uh, economic. And uh, we also have the honor of hosting Ken Gishinga, who's the Chief Economist, Mentoria Economics. Thank you for coming through this morning. And also Professor Hexen Iraqi, who is an economist and a professor at the University of Nairobi. Thank you, all of you, for graciously consenting to be part of this conversation this morning. I really do appreciate it. And also thank you for your valued company. You're still watching Morning Prime. Don't go away. Much, much coming up on the other side of the break on gender and equality.